number one, I'm going to call our meeting to order if we have enough people here. Yep, all right. Um, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, if you would. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag that the God of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> all right, very good. Um, Let's look at board docs here. Um, we have a motion to approve the minutes of the June 22nd meeting. So moved. Second, Marcus. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion passes. Uh, item 3.1 is a claim from Jeff and Sarah Wright. Chuck? Yeah, so uh, the motion here would be uh, to uh, file. Uh, the city did deny uh, this claim. It was related to a sewer backup. Do we have a motion to file? Move to file, Marcus. Second, Boren. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any objections? Chair votes aye, motion, motion passes. Madam Three Chair, Madam Chair, questions. Madam Chair, this is Marty. Yes. Could we move uh, 3.7 to the top uh, to take the next item? That's the uh, item related to uh, Carol Worth and the borrowing. Then she can do her presentation and then doesn't have to stay on for our whole meeting. All right, very good. Uh, Carol, go ahead, knowing that we've all been through this a number of times. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, the uh, report that uh, I presented tonight is uh, related to a piece of debt that the city has outstanding from 2007, originally issued for uh, constructing a police facility. We've been monitoring this issue for a couple of years now. Uh, on page two of my report, you can see the principal payments that are remaining that go out to the year 2026 for $4,775,000. The interest, the average interest rate is 4.84%. So obviously um, it's a, a very attractive refunding candidate. The prepayment date is October 1 of 2020. That's when we can stop that interest to the bondholders. Uh, page number three is the debt service schedule for all what's called city purpose debt. It's not all of the city's debt for TIF and so on. It's just related to the debt that is supported by the tax levy. So um, starting in 2020 through 2038. So you can see in 2021, the total debt service uh, goes up to the 4.39, stays there uh, for the next year, and then climbs a little bit higher. So the reason I point this out is because we're going to present two different options in this report, and that's kind of the rationale as to uh, why we're showing you this page. The next page is the sources and uses of funds. And basically the source of funds is we borrow money. We call them general obligation refunding bonds. And in this exercise, the amount is 4,615,000. The other source of funds is called reoffering premium from investors. It's uh, 229,000, that's an estimate. Uh, we could get more or less. If we get more, the issue size will drop. If we get less, the issue size goes up. The uses of funds, it says the money from those two sources will be used to pay expenses by the underwriter. He keeps back some of that money to pay those expenses. And also then the 4775 comes to the city to pay off the 2007 bond. The schedule below where it says preliminary pricing, these are, you look to the yield column. Those are yields that were in the market the week of July 6th for the city of Green Bay issued bonds. Uh, they're a double A3, so that's one notch lower than the city of Sheboygan. So hopefully uh, they're at least reflecting uh, realistic or even conservative interest rates. Um, as you can see, the under the bid information, the true interest cost, uh, go over to the right-hand side, is a 0.97%. So that would be including all expenses of issuance. The next page shows you 
two, we're going to show you two different options. The four million six hundred fifteen thousand, if we amortize it as what we call level savings, so that we know that there is potential for for saving some de debt service dollars here, but. Um, is how do you want to take your savings? So this solution is level savings. That means each year you take about the same dollar amount of savings. So the top part of page five is the amortization schedule for the 4 million six fifteen. So you can see we're going out to the same 2026 as the 07 bonds. The bottom part of the schedule compares that 2020 bond issue and to the 07 bond issue to show you that the estimated savings is about $108,000, $609,000 every year for a grand total of $652,000 present value. Uh, the percentage of present value savings is 13.415. Uh, a viable uh, refunding according to GFOA standards is 3%. So you can see um, obviously a uh, very, very attractive uh, candidate. The next page shows you what we call a saving solution that provides debt service relief in the first two years. So you can see that the top part is now a $4,610,000 issue, and that simply deals with how much premium is coming in on, on the structure. And the bottom part is taking that debt service schedule, comparing it to the same 07 bonds debt service, and there you'll see that your estimated savings in 2021 is over 208,000 and almost the same in 2022. And then it goes to a level savings of about 55,000 for the remaining years. The grand total is 647,000. Again, the present value 13.39%. So the point here is that you can take your savings in a variety of ways. Uh, the present value will hardly change because it's, of course, uh, a valuation of the cost of money over time. The future value of savings, which is that grand total under the estimated savings column, is the 647 uh, versus uh, the, the 652 on the prior page. Uh, again, not a huge change, but again, the purpose of showing you the two options is to make a decision on the structure of the issue in terms of option B, providing some debt service relief in those two years. And going back to that schedule that we looked at on page three that shows you your debt service schedule, you know, you are bumping up a little bit in those years. And by doing this refunding this way, it is going to provide you for uh, immediate relief for this coming budget in the next. So the following page is the financing timeline, uh, which is this presentation. And then you have a resolution that was introduced at your last meeting for setting the sale. So that is basically saying we're going to go to market for some refunding bonds um, at a future date and, uh, and uh, instructing us to proceed with that, with that process. Uh, the, foul, the, the rest of the items on that schedule is basically the process of going through the rating call uh, until the August 17th Council and Finance Committee action, which would be the sale date where we would take this. Um, that's timely because we can then publish the notice of call to stop that interest on the 07 bonds by August, August uh, 18th. Uh, we close the financing on September 15th, where the city gets the money, puts it in debtors. There's no money here for projects. It's simply to repay the 07 bonds. And then, of course, October 1, the bonds are paid off. So I guess with that, uh, I would like to uh, hear your thoughts about the two options that are shown in terms of the level savings or the debt service relief in those 21 or 22 years in terms of what you would like to proceed with or, or some other version of those two. Um, Carol, before I ask uh, Marty and Todd. Madam uh, Chair, I have a question. Uh, just a minute, please. Um, before, uh, Carol, before I ask, uh, Todd and Marty uh, regarding their thoughts. Um, do you have a preference uh, with, I mean, this is very, very good news, no matter how we do it. Right. Um, but do you have a preference or is there a, best pra a better practice uh, with respect to um, uh, 
equalizing the the uh, debt relief over five years or, or front loading it? Well, I guess that's going to depend on what your future capital improvement borrowings look like. Okay, we okay. had made some certain assumptions when we were running those schedules. Uh, but I guess the good news is that either option is producing such a good healthy savings that if considering the current economic conditions, which is something that we would not have taken into consideration when we ran the original CIP schedules, now we have something else that's coming into the discussion. So this option B allows you to achieve that same level of savings, but to also to respond to the economic conditions that weren't present when we were originally preparing the, the uh, projection. Okay, thank you. Um, who had the question? Was it you, Marcus? It was. Um, I've got uh, actually two questions. Uh, the, the first one was, did you say that was an interest rate of less than 1%? That is correct. Fantastic. And um, uh, I guess my second question is actually a comment. I'd be more in favor of taking the money up front uh, rather than equalizing it over. Uh, um, just my personal opinion. Okay. I know it's hard to believe that we're looking at interest rates of uh, less than 1%, and I would have been a little suspicious of that. But I can tell you today, I just did a, a 10 year issue uh, for another city that came in uh, less than 1%. So it's, it's for real. Very good. Um, Marty or Todd, do you want to weigh in with your thoughts? I mean, I think, uh, well, I shouldn't assume, but. My sense is we're all pleased to go ahead, and the decision before us is how we take the, how we structure the, the reduction. Yeah, thank you, Chair. This is Marty. So Todd, and myself, and Carol did uh, earlier this, or uh, last week, we did have a phone conference, and we discussed these two options in front of us. Um, I think based on the low interest rate and the minimal impact, and you know, we're talking about a $5,000 difference here, giving us that added flexibility of, of cash flow up front in the first two years really makes a lot of sense for the city with uh, giving us some flexibility with different uncertainties um, and what we could be faced with with budget and whether it's general obligation, TID or anything, we're going to have some constraints. And um, I think Definitely in the past, whenever we've gone out for borrowing, our, our goal usually is to try to do leveling off. But in this case, we're only talking about a, a couple of years here where we've got a, a slight variance. It's not significant in any way uh, that it's you know hundreds of thousands of dollars. But uh, giving us the flexibility was our, our main reason to support and or make the recommendation to go with the, the option B. Madam Chair. Bob, do you want to uh, open uh, Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and, and committee. I, I, I wanted to just basically give my input. Marty's 100% correct as usual. We both looked at this with Carol and basically agreed that knowing with the COVID and our upcoming uh, you know, opportunities with our budget that we really could use the extra in 2021 and 2022. Any members, do you have any further questions? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd just like to make a comment, uh, uh, Alderman Boren. Uh, I looked at this yesterday and I concur. Uh, I, uh, I was leaning that way towards B yesterday. And now after Carol's comments and Marty's and uh, Todd's, uh, I agree with going with uh, plan B. All right. Any other comments, questions? If not, I'd ask for more. I have one additional. Oh, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, are we looking at all the rest of the debt if we're getting interest rates under 1% at this point in time? 
Well, yes, I definitely have been reviewing every piece of that outstanding, and uh, we've had additional discussions with uh, with Todd and with Marty, uh, and I'll probably be um, uh, speaking to you about another uh, scenario, not necessarily just for savings, but refinancing is done for savings and for restructuring, and uh, so we discussed some uh, opportunities for restructuring where um, uh, the long-term debt would be uh, at a lower rate than what is currently outstanding as short-term debt. So um, uh, we will be coming back to you uh, with more information on that. Uh, a lot of the city's uh, outstanding debt is at very low interest rates. So um, the difference in uh, refinancing at the call date is something that you can do with tax exempt rates. But if it's not at a call date, then you have to use taxable rates. Not that that's the worst thing in the world because it's very close. Uh, but we have been definitely uh, monitoring, and uh, uh, right now uh, the next opportunity, I believe, would be for restructuring rather than saving. Okay. Good Thank question. You. Any others? All right, then we're looking for a motion to uh, authorize the sale of approximately $4.615 million in general <laughs> obligation refunding bonds. Go. Second, Boren. All right. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, Carol, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you so much, and thank you for accommodating me. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Um, we are going back to 3.2, which is a claim by Iaxia Claudio for alleged damage to a vehicle. Chuck? Yes, the, the proper motion here is also a motion to file. This is one we're actually paying uh, in the amount of $1,300, $1,306.51. This relates to vehicle damage done by a city garbage truck. Oh, it's good to see that every once in a while the city pays, just every once in a while. Is there a motion to file? Move to file. I'll move. Second. And a second? <laughs> All right, we have a motion and second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Chair votes aye. 3.3 uh, is a claim from John Erline for damages to his vehicle. This is also a uh, proper motion would be to file. This is also one though that we uh, paid. Uh, this has actually been hanging out there because the city offered to pay it quite some time ago, but it took some time for, uh, for the claimant uh, to accept uh, the payment. And it was a little complicated by the fact that the uh, insurance company didn't realize that their claimant had filed a claim and then they filed another claim. Um, but uh, this is being paid in the amount of $2,485.85. It's vehicle damage done by a city garbage truck. Could we have a motion to file? Motion to file. And a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, 3.4 is the resolution authorizing submission of a community development investment grant to the WEDC for the Innovation Hub building <laughs> along Indiana Avenue. Chad, I assume you'll be on this? Yes, thank you, Chair. So this document is to authorize the submittal, as the Chair said, of a community development investment grant, which is a grant uh, for community development within municipalities. Um, the, the idea behind this is this is a contribution to the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation Foundation, who has been a grant applicant to EDA for some economic development administration program for some CARES Act funding to the tune of $4.75 million to build the first building in the Innovation District that would house um, the SCEDC offices, have some space for Millport Sigma to move their lab here. 
uh, prototyping event space and business incubator spaces. So it's kind of an entrepreneurship and business startup center. Um, so the, the city needs to be the applicant on these grants. So therefore the request is to approve this authorizing staff to submit the application and uh, should we be awarded the funds in the range of 250 to 300,000, we would uh, pass those through to the Economic Development Corporation Foundation. Questions for Chad? Uh, Alderman Bourne, I have a couple questions, Chad. Uh, have they pick, uh, picked out a uh, location on Indiana Avenue where they're gonna build this building? That's my first question. Yes, the RDA has approved a, uh, it's the street side, so where the buildings were torn down uh, west of uh, shipwrecked and end zone, it would be along Indiana Avenue, basically between some old railroad right away in Indiana Avenue. My second question is, uh, is that building going to be on the property tax rolls? And if not, would we be negotiating a pilot with them? In the pro forma that was put together as part of the grant application, it would be a tax exempt building with a pilot. Um, and I think if I recall the tax, um, rec the, the pilot was around $50,000 a year. Thank you, Chad. Chad, my question is, um, are we essentially, is the city essentially acting as a channeling agent to pass this money through to the SCDC Foundation? I would have to say yes. Um, we've used this program in the past when we built the Encore Apartments and we applied for the funds and passed it through to the developer as part of our development incentives. So this is uh, typically how this is handled across the, the city where unless you've got an infrastructure need, but in this case, yes. So I guess my follow-up question then is, um, uh, if, if the project goes south, um, what is the repayment obligation, if any, and who is responsible for it? That might be a question for Chuck, but... So the, the Redevelopment Authority um, and the EDC Foundation are the applicants on the EDA grant, and they're the ones that um, they'll, they'll be in first position. Um, I, this is a grant and, and once you fulfill and build the building, if the, under the previous terms and conditions, which um, should the city be awarded, those agreements would be reviewed with Chuck's office and be approved by the council. Um, but when we did it back in 2015, after the project was built and we confirmed the um, amount of money that was invested in it per the application, there was no further obligation. I can't tell you if that's the way it is today, if the terms and conditions have changed, but um, as we had told the RDA that we would not move forward with any of the grant agreements until legal counsel and the respective bodies have approved the um, awards. Okay, so essentially it's, we're pretty much, um, well, subrogated isn't the word I want, but we're pretty much protected if, if, if this just doesn't go as well as we hope. Yeah, I guess you could say that, um, you know, we ha have other obligations in there as the redevelopment authority and the city at that point. So if... Okay. Are there any other uh, questions? All right, then I am looking for um, a motion to authorize submission of the CDI grant uh, for the Innovation Hub building along Indiana Avenue. So moved. And is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Okay, have we lost Marcus? Am I seen or? Marcus, Marcus are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Okay, maybe I'm just uh, on the wrong screen. Um, 
Very good. We will move on then to a resolution or uh, item 3.5, which is a resolution authorizing acceptance of funds from the Sheboygan River and Harbor Natural Resources Trustee Council in the amount of $23,000. Chad? So this is a long-awaited uh, grant request that the city applied for approximately five years ago after the Sheboygan River was uh, dredged. Um, under the CERCLA Act and uh, Natural Resource Damage Assessment, the uh, DNR, the Department of Justice, the, the Federal Department of Justice, and a number of other agencies sue the responsible parties for funds uh, related to the damage that was done uh, related to, in this case, the contamination in the Sheboygan River. So we, over the years, have submitted a number of projects for this uh, program. They settled um, after five years of negotiating. Um, and the two projects that, this one and the next document on your agenda are two projects that um, kind of came out of it. So this is to accept 23,000 to construct some additional fishing platforms uh, made out of rocks along the bank of the Sheboygan River. This was identified in the uh, Kiwanis Park Master Plan. Um, so when the water levels recede, the plan would be to use these funds to ad give additional fishing opportunities for people along the bank at the river. So this first document is to accept the $23,000 from the Natural Resource Trustee Council. Any questions for Chad? Uh, Alderman Boren, I have a question. Uh, Chad or, or Dave Beeble or Ryan Sazma could maybe want to get in on this too. Uh, with, I read in the document that this uh, dock down at, fishing dock down at Kiwanis Park is not going to be done this year because of the high water and anticipation that the water is going to go down uh, so that this dock will get the most use in future years. Is the plan going to be to build this fishing dock at some kind of a happy medium that if the river goes up again, that it's still going to be usable? Or is it going to be underwater uh, in future years if, if the river continues to go up and then not be useful? The plan under these funds was not to create a dock, but to basically create fishing areas out of, out of stones and rocks that would be like flatter stones that could project out into the water. So it would be a natural kind of design there's some of them down there already where it's like a layered rock thing where you can depending on the height of the water you can stand on this kind of hard surface and fish so you're not standing in the mud alongside the water so the uh, it wouldn't be a dock like you would typically see it would be more of a natural feature um, but the plan and the conversation we've had with the fish and wildlife service that's awarding these funds is the fact that um, we won't we won't probably construct these until the water levels decrease enough that they can be constructed. There is some out there today, but they're underwater. <laughs> uh, just to follow up, Chad, uh, I, I'll have to go down to Kiwanis Park and take a look at, you know, the existing, if, if it's visible and not underwater. But is the top of that then going to be flat that, for example, if I, somebody wanted to go down there and go fishing, they could sit on a lawn chair? Or do you just have to stand on some jagged edge, edge rocks or sit on these rocks to fish there. You could you could sit on a lawn chair. They're flat enough that you could sit on them, but you won't see them today because they're underwater. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions for Chad? Hearing none, uh, could we have a motion to um, authorize acceptance of this uh, grant from the Sheboygan River and Harbor Natural Resource Trustee Council. So moved, Boren. Second. Any further discussions? Hearing none, all in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Uh, moving along to 3.6, which is a resolution to accept funds from the same trustee council in the amount of $173,000. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. So, thank you, Chair. So, this is the same program. This is to replace the bridge at Evergreen Park. So, when you go through Evergreen Park at the Christmas lights and you see that covered bridge that goes over the Pigeon River um, near Area 5, 
that bridge has the abutments are coming out on it and there's some structural issues with it. So the idea is to use these funds to create a, uh, purchase a prefabricated metal bridge, uh, install new bridge abutments and then have them come and place this bridge over the Sheboygan River that would add uh, some fishing bump outs on it. So if you wanted to fish into the Pigeon River, you could do so. Um, and then some improvements on the west side of the Pigeon River uh, to, accept, to make it more accessible and deal with some ADA and then some erosion issues. So um, this has been in the works in the capital improvements plan for a number of years. Uh, this is the funding source for that and it's really about bringing um, the options of people being able to uh, fish from this bridge within Evergreen Park. Questions for Chad? Madam Chair, I have a question. Marcus Savaglio, District 5. Uh, Chad, is this the is this the bridge that um, that was of much debate between um, the JCs and the um, the Kiwanis, or the, well, not the JCs, the the two groups that were trying to help Evergreen Park this winter? Yes, it was. Will this fix their issue? Yes, it will. Thank you. Chad, are you sure about that? <laughs> Well, the the bridge will fix the issue. I don't know if it'll fix the issue between the groups, but okay. Yeah, but in all seriousness, uh, because many of us have heard from both sides about the importance of this uh, bridge and resolving some of the issues. So, is it your opinion that, to the best extent that you know, that the skiers are are um, okay with this? Yeah, this bridge would add enough width for what they want to do to get their grooming equipment across it. Um, but we're not telling that. We're saying that this is a fishing platform. Um, but yes, it will take care of those issues. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Chad? I'm looking then for a motion to uh, accept the funds from the Sheboygan River and Harbor Natural Resource Trustee Council in so, the amount of $173,000. So moved. So moved, Warren. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Moving on to uh, 3.8, uh, this is a direct referral to a resolution in support of federal economic stimulus investments in water restoration priorities for the Great Lakes coastal community. Mayor Vandersteen, I think this is your issue. No, uh, I think Mayor Vandersteen's taking this one. Uh, the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative, uh, the city's been a member of that group for well over a decade. And they're uh, putting forward a, an effort to try to develop stimulus funding for clean water projects and erosion projects in the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence Seaway. And so this is a campaign that they're asking all their member cities to try to promote, uh, both by talking to the legislators in the federal government and passing resolutions like this. So this is before you for, for that consideration. All right, could we have a motion then to um, support the federal economic stimulus investments laid out in uh, 3.8? So moved. Would there be such a motion? I move to make that motion. Okay, is there a second? I will second it. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. All right, moving on to 3.9 is the resolution authorizing a, a vacant land offer to purchase with Martin's Trilling True Value Hardware, the site of the old Schweigen Casket Company. Um, I assume that's yours, Chad? Yes, thank you. So this is um, an item we had talked about in closed session. This would be to sell the property basically south of Martin's True Value Hardware and east of that auto repair place um, on the corner of St. Clair and North 9th Street. Um, we had got, we've gotten an offer from um, the folks at Martin True Value for $10,000. 
Um, we are work, staff has worked with them and had multiple meetings and have seen a design of a building and a site plan that we believe we'll be able to finalize and get to the Planning Commission in short order to um, get approval that would take the store, outdoor storage of fertilizers and topsoil along the west property line and put it all within the building um, to make the neighbors in this neighborhood happy. So we're recommending approval of the vacant land offered a purchase for $10,000. Any questions for Chad? I just wanna, this is all in the board. I just wanna ma make a comment that uh, that's gonna be a huge upgrade for the appearance of their parking lot and also for uh, the uh, east side of Tina Wick's zipper shop over there. Uh, that's been an eyesore for so many years and it'll be just great to finally get that cleaned up and have that stuff put in a, uh, in a, in a uh, nice uh, building. Thank you. And uh, with respect to that, I'm going to exercise whatever tiny privilege I have as chair to uh, move to execute the vacant land offer to purchase with Martin Shilling True Value. Second. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Is there a second? Second, Warren. Okay. Well, Any yeah. other discussions? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Um, Chad, my request would be when appropriate that you let um, Ms. Wick know about this development. I think it will make her very happy. Thank you. After the council approves the document, we'll let her know that we accepted an offer. Perfect. Thank you. Um, 3.10 is an ordinance amending section 82-33 of the code so as to modify the Department of Public Works Table of Organization. David Beeble, I assume you're here for that. There we go. Yes, Thank I you. am. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, the department recently had a, a retirement uh, in, at the end of April, uh, beginning of May. And as a result, the department is uh, constantly evaluating personnel uh, needs and skill sets necessary to, I guess, meet the ever-changing needs uh, within the department as well as the city of Sheboygan. So anytime we have a, a retiree, it, it, it creates a vacuum or a loss of some institutional knowledge uh, that's always difficult to replace, but it's also an opportunity to address and fill areas requiring new skills or abilities to meet the challenges uh, presented to the department as a city on a daily basis. So what, what this proposal in front of you does is uh, the, the position that was a retirement was a construction lead person in our streets and sanitation division. This position would typically set up and uh, uh, basically project manage a lot of the internal street and sanitation sewer, sewer type of uh, storm and sanitary sewer construction that is occurring on a daily basis within the department. Uh, since the department is beginning to uh, do a little bit, what I would say is more aggressive street repair program, which is, involves more sanitary, more storm sewer, as well as more street reconstruction in, in anticipation of the asphalt paving, uh, it's, it's really taking a little, a, a little bit of higher skill level than necessarily maybe what we've had in the past. And what we've did is when this retirement occurred, we transferred our engineering technician that quite frankly was pulled by the streets and sanitation division almost on a daily basis. We felt this is an opportunity to actually place that position, that person in this role to not only raise the level of uh, what I would say, uh, skill level from an engineering and project management perspective, but also uh, basically formalize the position in terms that this person's available for this type of work. Um, that, that transition, we've already internally uh, moved this person. He's been in there for several weeks and already we're seeing quite a bit of uh, opportunities and benefits with the increase in technology in terms of uh, mapping, project management, and just uh, organizational skills with, the, with our computer system. So it's been a, a, a very well organized upgrade in that, in that sense. 
With that, that creates a vacancy in the backside in the engineering division where the engineering technician position was previously located. With that, what we'd like to do in the department is really basically take that position and upgrade it. We're looking at creating, basically it's adding, I would say this is a position already in the department. It's, a, it's called civil engineer project manager. We have one right now in the department. What this would do is we'd get a second civil engineer project manager. With the number of projects that we're having, as well as the amount of consulting services that we've been relying on um, from the outside, we feel this position uh, is a, would really strengthen the department. Um, again, the, the big thing is, is the workload, the expertise required, uh, the amount of work that we've been, uh, as well as consulting at times, could be reduced. And again, this, this position is fully funded through the wastewater uh, department, wastewater uh, treatment plant funding as part of our sanitary sewer maintenance program. So likewise, this, the wastewater engineering technician was funded through there. This will be an upgrade and to offset the cost uh, in order to upgrade the position, we would reduce our, our contracted services by that like amount. So it really doesn't have any effect on the general fund budget and uh, ultimately, again, enhances our overall opportunity. Lastly, I'd just like to, to recognize and, and just state that, you know, myself as well as city engineer Ryan Sazma, we have approximately 60 years of combined service. Um, not that we have immediate needs for retirement, but part of the succession planning is to bring on such people uh, in terms of a civil engineer project manager. This is not an entry level position. This is a seasoned professional engineer with at least 10 years experience. Uh, we have multiple million dollar types of projects that the department is managing. And uh, the more expertise and support that we can have um, and get, get people in, get them trained and get them um, acclimated to the department ultimately will help in the ultimate succession of the department as well. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Who has questions for David? David, uh, this is Alderman Boren. Uh, who did you move up internally into that, that first position? Uh, internally, it was our engineering technician, uh, Tyler Hill. He's been with the department okay. uh, about two years. And, and then I, I understand you. I understand you said with the second position there, you're gonna to have to go out and look for somebody with the credentials? Correct. Okay. It sounds like a good plan. And uh, uh, can you just go over again the rationale for your being able to reduce your contracted services and what you think that'll amount to? Sure. Uh, contracted services at the wastewater plant um, or for, for wastewater, uh, sanitary sewer maintenance, excuse me. That's roughly around 450,000 uh, on an annual basis. Now that, that can be contracted with engineers. It could be contractors actually doing repairs. Uh, with this position, we'd be reducing that by approximately 25,000. So there's still plenty of <clears throat> capacity within that fund to continue, to continue to do work. However, it does give us the opportunity to do some more in-house design versus uh, outside uh, design. And um, outside design can uh, add up fairly quickly. Um, anywhere from 50 to 100,000 is not uncommon and, uh, just for a smaller engineering project. Thank you. Other questions? I have a question. Go ahead, Trey. Thank you, that was Marcus. Think, uh, Marcus. <laughs> okay. uh, Director Beeble, did you um, take into account uh, taxes and uh, employer paid FICA food suda type stuff in your estimates here? Uh, the, the estimates would include, this is base, just base salary and, and in factor that they'd have similar pen, uh, benefits, family benefits this, um, likewise from the prior position to this position. So we just kind of kept that at flat. Thank you. Um, with the uh, flat $25,000 coming out of the wastewater treatment, do you think that 
the additional expense of twenty one thousand then taxed would be covered by the twenty five thousand dollars i believe it is uh, oh, if you. not i it, it should be covered within the salaries portion of the budget that is there's 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 salary budget but then there's also the benefits that is also a line item and that part is not changing within the budget between the two positions thank you other questions if none i'm looking for a motion to amend the uh ordinance uh section 8233 uh, to modify the table of organization for be DPW as outlined uh, in the uh, 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 document. So move, Warren. Second, Marcus. All right. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to go into a closed session at this point. Um, we need a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 1985 sub 1 sub e with staff for competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to sale of city owned land. Move to one closed motion? section, Boren. Second, Marcus. All right, we need a roll call vote on this. Uh, Alderman Boren. Aye. Alder Mitchell? Aye. Alder Savaglio? Aye. Chair votes aye. We are in closed session. Thank you. Thank you. We are now in open session, and I am looking for a motion to approve the sale of land uh, as outlined in uh, agenda item 4.2. So move, Boren. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Are, are we back on the air? I want to just want to make sure that you're, we're back on the air since you oh, through so quickly. If somebody can verify that. We're recording it so it'll be on the we broadcast it. Be on the I'm being told that it is being recorded and will be rebroadcast, but it is not currently live. Chuck, is that okay? We just gotta wait until we can go back live. Can you guys make us live again? Not the team's live. Uh, they, got, I'm being told we cannot go live. It's not. It's not live. Um, I'm being told, Chuck, that we cannot go back live. Okay, and then I guess we'll have to wait to vote on it. Oh, my. What? Um, at another meeting, Chuck? Yeah. But it's, um, it's being recorded. Can this be referred to the, to the council meeting as a direct referral on the 20th? Can't take any action right now. You, you're, you, you went back into open session, but because the meeting isn't being... Um, five, we, we just can't take any action. So um, uh, what I would say is that the meeting ends and um, on Monday somebody can recall, we will have to go through the process, but somebody could recall it out of the committee. Chuck? Okay. Chuck, what if they uh, reset it, we recall in and, and we just, like as if there was a delay in the system, like a reboot? As, as long as we're back to, um, you know, back, back online so that we can, and, and you know, it's back on the air, we're, we, we can wait for that too, yeah. Is that a sensible thing to wait for, I guess, is my question. They're caucusing. Eric? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we, okay. So either way, it's going to be held. Either way, we it'll have to wait for council. Okay. Marilyn, there we are not able to do that at this time. 
All right, so Chuck, we can't even adjourn, can we? No, you really can't. Um, that's pr problematic. I, I, I would basically say the meeting is over. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there and we'll have to talk tomorrow about how to get it out of committee. Sure, sure. We could probably even convene a, a short meeting, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, it can be that, or there's also a process for recalling items out of committee. It's just okay. a process we have to go through. Yeah. All right. Well, I want all of you to enjoy the fact that this meeting is still going on from now until hell freezes over. So <laughs> uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy your evening, and just remember. The eyes of the camera are not upon you, but you are in the service of the city.